uh, shift focus now to another of our guests. Uh, we invite Sunil Sanghai, the Managing Director, Head Global Banking, HSBC India, on the show. Uh, Sunil, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, uh, first up, uh, what's the, the mood with respect to what is left of the divestment program? Do you think uh, the government will be able to pull through with ONGC and sale in what is left of the financial year? Let them, uh, as far as the government disinvestment program and the PSU is concerned, our PSUs, the quality of the PSU and the size of the PSU clearly is so large that there is a definitely the investor appetite for them. If you really look at the history of the disinvestment program started in 1992 and that year we could manage to get around 3,000 crore. Uh, in the year 2004 it increased to 15,000 crore. Uh, the last couple of years have been very good. Uh, last year we did around 23,000 crore. Current year, which is 2010-2011, we have already achieved 23,000 crore. So, in terms of the size, I think it is increasing, which means there is an appetite, the investor fancy for the PSU stock given the size and the quality of these companies. So, good morning. Uh, you know, uh, we've, we've been all hearing about uh, this trade which is uh, playing out, uh, you know, about uh, emerging markets not doing too well and developed countries actually doing quite well. So, you know, in that case of, uh, of uh, scenario, do you see a lot of uh, inbound m and you know, a lot of foreign companies actually coming and buying Indian companies because uh, there is a general sense that some of the Indian companies uh, will go through some tough times and at the same time, uh, you know, some of these European and American companies uh, will have a lot of cash to deploy. So, do you see a lot of uh, inbound m and taking place this year? Morning, Anuj. This is a very interesting thing and you are right. I think we have been seeing a lot of interest by the foreign companies looking at the Indian situation. But the two important points here to note, uh, one is uh, while there is a lot of interest from the foreign companies into India, but given the growth story, is the same point which you made, given the growth story of the Indian economy, uh, the challenge what we are facing is that do we have the real opportunities here? And the second is, in certain situations, if there are opportunities, there are regulatory impediments which mm -hmm. come in a way. So to that extent, the volume for inbound, while there is a huge amount of interest, the volume would be still restricted. Okay, <coughs> Sunil, the other uh, issue that is actually bothering both the government of India and certainly the RBI is the uh, re you know systematic fall we have seen FDI. Uh, I mean, uh, what's your sense? Is it just uh, 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 you know a two or a three quarter trend because of uh, uh, poor uh, financial or economic conditions in the West, uh, or do you think that uh, you know this is going to be a problem? What what is what is the sense you are getting that you will see a return of FDI? The critical thing there, Alata, is that there are significant sectors which are still very restricted from the FDI point of view and also from the M&A uh, perspective. Now the FDI would come if you have a clarity from the M&A. So for example, telecom, you have restriction in terms of the M&A guideline. Mm -hmm. uh, the second couple of other sectors like insurance, financial services, mm -hmm. consumer retail, these are the very large significant sectors which can attract a lot of FDI. Now, the, there has to be clarity around the FDI for these sectors which will open up these sectors in a significant way and therefore the FDI inflow would come in. So, as I said, there is an interest, there is an interest across the different sectors. Uh, we need to have a little bit more clarity on some of these regulatory framework for the, to attract the FDI. Oh, yeah. The last time you know we had a bull market in India, you know, uh, in 2007, it was marked by a lot of Indian companies going out and buying businesses that were way larger uh, than you know the current businesses. Uh, you know, Tata Motors uh, going out making a big acquisition, Tata Steel making a big acquisition, Hindalco making a big acquisition. You know, this time around we haven't seen any of that. Uh, you think this time Indian companies realize that uh, you know uh, with uh, you know with the interest rates also uh, set to rise, uh, maybe it will not be prudent to actually take too much debt and go out for these acquisitions? I think there are enough opportunities for the Indian corporate uh, outside India and therefore the Indian companies would continue to look at opportunities outside India but as you rightly said, however the interest will moderate as compared to the size of the Indian corporate. The reason being A. Given the global situation, I think the Indian corporate have started understanding and they become a little bit of risk covers. Number two, in terms of the financing, the leverage financing has become 
much more rational and therefore you would see the opportunities would be looked at more in terms of the, the strategy and the strategic opportunities and people would be more selective than playing, at, playing it out for the size. Uh, Sunil, uh, two kinds of uh, M&A activity, well, you can call it M&A investment banking activity have happened uh, over the past uh, uh, several uh, months. Uh, one is in the pharma sector. We are clearly seeing uh, either you can call it courage or disinterest uh, of uh, Indian promoter companies uh, wanting to sell off their units to uh, uh, foreign, uh, uh, prospective foreign buyers. It started off with Ranbaxy and the trend has continued. Will that be a trend you will see in the current year as well? Uh, is, 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 is that looking like uh, still a ripe scene? And secondly, uh, divestment by foreign companies, uh, uh, many of them finding it attractive because either share prices have fallen or for whatever reason, but uh, di divestment by multinationals, not necessarily in the past 10 months, but that has been a trend every now and again. So do you think that will also be something that will play out this year? So on the first point, on the domestic, there are two things. One is a domestic consolidation, or the second is a foreign company buying out the mm. Indian operations. I think my view that uh, this is something which is very real. It's a medium to long term strategy. It's not something which is going to happen immediate, but it is very real. Uh, I think the question is not whether it will happen. The question is when will it happen? Mm -hmm. And you would continue to see the trend going forward more and more. The consolidation is bound to happen. Uh, as far as the divestment of the foreign companies of the Indian arms, it just given the valuation differentiation between the different parts of the world and the, and the emerging market, particularly in India, it makes sense to list in India and uh, divest part of the holding here and sell because of the valuation differentiation which gives you a higher kicker. Manish, uh, sorry, Sunil, uh, you have been hearing out uh, the experts at your conference uh, and perhaps even foreign investors. What's your sense? Uh, do you think this short emerging market, short India, long US trade is something that uh, looks like will continue for a better part of 2011? See, we spent time with the investors whole of yesterday and today and I think the general mood from the investors overall is very, very positive. This is probably the intermediary period right now where they are just waiting and watching. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the very important event budget is around the corner. So they will wait for the budget and they will see the policy announcement in the budget. But the general mood, and we had a lot of long only funds as well, uh, and the general mood is is still very, very India story is intact. I don't know if you look at uh, debt syndication as well, uh, Sunil, at your end, but there is talk that the withholding tax may be uh, uh, excused, especially perhaps when uh, infrastructure companies are invested in. Uh, will that make a big difference? You would see a lot of money coming in, you think? I don't look at that part of uh, business, Lata. All right, Sunil. So thanks a lot for joining us. More of your colleagues will be with us, and we'll certainly get this thing also discussed. Thank you very much for joining